Hey, how's it going everybody? In today's day and age with more and more bandwidth, we are seeing interface cards with higher port speeds. And so I'm going to show you a little bit about the MPC 10E M rate card. I have the version that's 10 ports. There's also one that's 15 ports. So let's get into this. To start off with, you can see I'm using an MX240. Shows it right there. Routing engines are the uh, next generation routing engines. And I have the MPC-10E M-Rate card slotted in slot one. So that's the first available slot, uh, slot number one, not zero, because we're using two routing engines. And in the MX240, the line card slot zero has been repurposed for a routing engine. If you go to juniper.net, you'll see the MPC-10E 10C M-Rate card comes in 10 ports. That's what uh, 10C means. There's a 15 port version of which you would see these this blank area populated with five more ports. So in the 10 port version, of those 10 ports, there are two five port groups, as you see here in this picture. 00, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, and 0, 4, and then 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, and 1, 4. All prefaced with the card number when you're specifying the entire interface. So uh, it would be one slash and then that port number if it's in slot one. Okay, and then you can see port 04 right here and port 14 says 400G. So those are 400 gig ports. So I'm going to be reserving those for future growth in my network and trying my very best to only use these four ports of both port groups for 10 gig breakout or 100 gig, uh, maybe even some 40 gig. You can see here, when you use a 10 gig interface, it breaks it out into four. Same is true about a 25 gig interface, it breaks it out into four, which will require you to use a breakout cable. And we're gonna look at that in just a moment. When I first booted up my MX240 with my MPC 10 E card in there, I see that all the interfaces are shown. So we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, and 0, 4, and then the second set of five. All right, you can see that I already configured the first one as an aggregated Ethernet, but it shows all 10 of them right away. Now I wanted to configure the third port of the second pick group in slot one as a 10 gig interface. And before I committed that configuration, I wanted to first look at what the port speeds are. If I look at 00, zero I see a speed of 100. Uh, one zero also shows a speed of 100. And one three shows a speed of 100. Those are all ETs. So looking at that uncommitted configuration and then commit checking it, looks good. Now when I commit it, it succeeds and then we see the following. Now what's interesting here is now we see the second port group is very different than it was before. Now we see the first five ports in the first port group are still there. But the second port group is gone, and the only thing there is the 10 gig breakout ports that we configured. I'll draw your attention to the fact that now 10 gig ports are configured and listed as colon 0, colon 1, colon 2, and colon 3. That's your four 10 gig ports, okay? So what's interesting is the other four ports in that group are gone. Only the one that was specifically configured is still there. Then looking a little closer at show interface on those XEs, we now see that those are configured for speed 10 gig. Something I want you to see here, before we configured that 10 gig port, we could see that there was a 100 gig SFP in location zero of pick one of FPC one. After configuring the 10 gig port, 
that transceiver or that QSFP is now missing from this line here. You see that? It was here before, but then after configuring that 10 gig port, it's gone. Now we need to set the configuration for that 100 gig port to get it to come back and be recognized. And that's exactly what I did. And now you can see that 100 gig QSFP is now recognized. And now we see that we have not only the four 10 gig breakout, but now we have that 100 gig port recognized as well. So what we're seeing here is when you specify port speeds, often you will need to specify the other ports on there as well. The MPC 10 card uh, auto automatically comes up in its default state as all interfaces as 100 gig. So when you go and start configuring different port speeds, you're going to need to go back and set the speeds on those other ones. Something to be aware of is when you're changing the port speeds in a five port virtual pick group, the virtual pick does reset itself. As you can see, I was pinging the MX240's loopback interface. And yes, I have changed the IP addresses to protect the innocent to some bogus IP addresses here. So, but anyway, the point is I was pinging the loopbacks and I was getting replies, but when I changed the port speed, I started losing my pings. The virtual pick reset itself. So I lost connectivity to the MX240. And then a few seconds later, probably 30 seconds later or so, uh, you can now see I was able to ping the MX240. Yes, and I even lost my SSH session. So my putty session uh, timed out when I lost connectivity. So just be aware of that. Be careful. You might want to pre-configure these ports when you're initially setting up your MXs so that you don't have operational customer impact. Checking some of those port speeds now, the virtual pick one first interface is now 100 gig and I still have 10 gig on one of those breakout ports and my initial one in, in virtual pick zero is now 100. I also want to show you that the fourth interface is also 100. You might recall that I showed you on the Juniper website that that fourth location is capable of 400 gig. But as you can see, it's you know automatically by default 100 gig. And we'll talk about that a little bit in just a second. Also, this is a very helpful command. This is how to look at that subgroup, the pick in slot zero of the entire card with this show chassis command. You can see the uptime is seven days. You can also see the uh, types of SFPs that are in there and also the capabilities of your ports. Strangely, it doesn't, sh it doesn't show 400 gig on these and we'll get to that a little more in a moment. And what I meant to say was it doesn't show 400 gig as a capability of that fifth interface at the bottom in that listing, because we know it's that fifth interface that is 400 gig capable. And so scrolling down, if I look at pick one, this is the one we configured a port on a moment ago. And there you see the change in uptime has only been up for 12 minutes. So a little bit of time between when I configured it and when I'm showing you this on the video, uh, 12 minutes has gone by, uh, but you do see that it does reboot itself. Here's those commands for the ports that we have configured speed on. Okay, so you see how you set 100 gig and 10 gig. Okay, now let's look at how to do 400 gig. I'll show you the version of Junos I'm using in a moment, if you haven't picked up on that already in one of the uh, CLI outputs. But if you set chassis FPC1, pick one, remember, port four. So port four of pick zero or pick one can be used for 400 gig. But if we put a question mark after speed, we see that 400 gig is not an option. But if we set 400 gig manually, you know, without auto completing, because it's not shown as an option, and we show pipe compare, we see this is our uncommitted configuration. 
Now proceeding down further, you see that I did a commit check and it succeeds and then I commit and quit and it absolutely succeeds in applying that configuration of 400 gig. You might be wondering why? Why was there a Junos command that was able to be typed into the configuration uh, but it wasn't shown as an option? It's a hidden command. Why are some of these options hidden? Well, um, I think what you'll find out in talking with other uh, network professionals or folks at Juniper, maybe in the Juniper Technical Assistance Center, is that uh, some options are not fully uh, tested and approved for use in certain versions of Juno's operating system. So it, they're, they're able to be used if you know that it's a command option and, uh, and how to type it, because it's hidden, so you can't just find it by using a question mark. But you can expect that that option will be there in future Junos releases. Okay, then you see I do a commit check, and then furthermore, a commit and quit, and it does take that 400 gig manual configuration. We now see in a show interface output that ET114 is shown. And looking further at ET114, we see the speed of 400 gig was successful. Also, I'll show you right after that configuration was done, we do see it is there in the configuration. And since this is just a test, I'm rolling back my configuration. Rollback one means roll back the one previous configuration. We see the minus signs there, removing those pieces of the config and the configuration of that rollback succeeds. We now see that command is missing from this line here. So that did successfully roll it back. And ET114 is gone from the show interface output. And to prove it, when you do a show interface, ET114 and grep for speed, it shows nothing because the interface is no longer there. So this just further emphasizes that by default, the MPC-10 card shows 10 100 gig interfaces. But as soon as you start manually configuring speed, you need to be cognizant, just be aware of the fact that other interfaces will be removed from the, uh, from the router. They're not there, and you need to manually configure those to bring them back to life and set the speed that you want to operate those on. Okay, I told you I was going to tell you what version of Junos I was testing all of this on, and there it is right there. Junos 19.4R3.11. So in this version, this is the type of behavior that you should expect to see when configuring these types of port speeds and the things that I just did in my testing. Okay, that's it. That's all I got for now. I hope this was helpful to you folks out there operating Juniper Networks. See you later.